tonight. I'm going to give you this first. We're going to talk about what it says real quickly. I want to make sure you all are understanding what it is. Okay. Um, so just so that we're all clear, I would really appreciate some help with reading. So uh, Austin, if you would read about uh, the very first car. Okay, two very special cars have been developed. Steady car with the push of a button can instantly go from zero to one mile per minute and will continue to travel at constant speed of one mile per minute until the button is pushed, releasing this feature, at which point the car is controlled by the gas pedal as in a normal car. Okay. Would someone like to kind of rephrase that so that I know that everybody's clear on what that car can do? Goes one mile every minute. And this, does the speed change at all? No, once you push the button, it stays constant. Okay, so it's like a what on the car? Cruise. cruise just like a cruise control. Okay, Okay. great. Thank you. Um, Chelsea, would you please uh, read the, about the variable car? Variable car. With the push of a button, travels is a distance in miles that re equals the square of the number of minutes traveled divided by 60 until the button is pushed, releasing this feature at which point the car is controlled by the gas pedal as in a normal car. Okay. Who would like to kind of paraphrase what's going on with that one? That one's a little harder. Anyone want to take a stab at it? Jaden, would you mind? So how far it goes you going to square that and then divide by 60. Okay, so when you say how far it goes, it's not really how far it goes, it's how long it travels, how much time has passed, how many minutes has passed, you square that. So if it was 36 minutes, you'd square root it. Not square root it, you would square, square. it. Remember the difference between a square root and a square. Okay, what is the difference? What, how are square roots and squares related, guys? They're what to each other? Opposites. opposites. But what's a better word than opposites? Inverses. Inverses of each other. They undo each other. Very good. Thank you, Chelsea, for clarifying that. Anybody else have a question about the cars? All right. So what I want to do is put you in groups. Um, pretty much the groups you've been doing before, I think. But anyway, we're going to put Kyler, oh, gosh, Kyler, Austin, and Chelsea in one group. Erica, if you'll flip around and work with Abby and Jaden. Um, I want... Amy to flip around and work with Lauren and Mitchell and Elliot and if you two will flip around and work with Elliot. So the question, oh, we should hit the question real quick first. What is it you want to do? So one more person read for me, please, so we'll make sure we're all clear. Jaden, so the actual problem asks you to. Um, and race at 30 miles, assuming that both cars start at the same time, at the same place, and that both cars engage their special buttons at the same moment, which car would you want to have? Justify your solution with multiple representations. Okay. Does everybody understand the question? So in other words, you want to do what in the race? Win. 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 So which car do you want to have so that you will win? How many, how many answers do you want us to have? How many answers? Oh, you mean how many representations? At least two, if you can. Okay. Alrighty. Remember, use, feel free to use anything in the box if you need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the same time, at the same place, and both have the engage your special buttons at the same moment. Which part would you want to have? Justify your solution. Okay, so this car, this little button can go from zero to one. I'm sorry, say that again. The units are in? The units are minutes. The time is in minutes. The distance is in miles. So, yeah, so if you're going to put in... So if you put in 30 here, that's minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah, it's the 30 miles. And Wait till you do it, so then you have to do it by the minutes. So you want to go 30 miles. The race is going to take 30 miles. Yes, that's, so that's what we squared. So, and I don't know how long that will take. So that would take 15 minutes. How do you know it's going to take 15 minutes? But this is 30 miles, and you're squaring the number of minutes. Okay. So then it doesn't say the minute, so then that's our variable. And then yes, you that's your variable. So you have it 60. Very good. Very good. To figure it out, doesn't need to be equal to something, so then we can do it cross we know the steady part. Can you do that? I just don't know how to be equal. Okay, then that's what you got to figure out. 
Okay, so think about, um, so if the, if the time you put in here varies, because that's a variable, then what else is going to vary, depending on what you put in? And the answer is going to be a what? A variable. Yes, but what's that variable representing? The miles. The miles. The miles. Right, because you put minutes in here, right? Yeah. And what so you get out. Isn't that what it says? Travels a distance in so miles. 30 is uh, right here. Oh. So then this is like 30, so then this is the X that's right here. And then you can do like, this is over one, so then you can do like cross product. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, I thought that it was, it was so going we as doing? fast as one mile. So this goes to six, zero to sixty instantly. Yeah. Right. And then cruise. So it's pretty much like that. So that one's going sixty miles per hour, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And this one's going. Tell me why you think that would be your equation. Because this is how many miles you're going. And then your minutes, you have to square your minutes and then divide by 60. So if you solved that equation, what would it tell you? It would tell you the minutes. That it would take to go? To go 30, 30 miles. To 30 miles, okay. Does that seem reasonable to everybody? Yes. Okay. Can we find that? That's what we even came up with. And that tells you what? The second car faster. Okay. Like it'll take to get to a speed. You ready? And so now we're, and so we have to find two of them, right? A different way to show that. So, so, so you're telling me the second car can faster and less time, can, car is faster. Yeah. It only takes 15 minutes to go 30 miles. So what, by the second car, let's identify That's which one. one you mean, the variable car? Yeah. Okay, so the variable car would win. So you would want to be that car. Mm -hmm. So how how do you know that? What are, tell me what these numbers are telling you. Well, because this is that's, uh, this one's so going uh, one one mile a minute, yeah. and that one you go yeah. the miles squared by and by divide six. that by sixty. So, that's 15. Take 15 so it just takes half the time. Of but this says equals the square of the number of minutes traveled. So if you're traveling, so if you put that in there, that's saying you're going thirty minutes. Okay. Not 30 miles. Okay. So if you go 30 minutes, then you're going to go how far? 15 miles. 15 miles. So you want me to. So. Okay. So that changes. Yeah. Okay, so I heard what you just told them. So this isn't. How are you doing, listening? <laughs> trying to figure out what I'm doing. Okay, but, you're fine. So this is actually 15 miles that you go in 30 minutes. Right. So it's not oh, 15 so minutes, it's, it's right. Of. Okay. So we need to find but the number this that this minute, is. Right? right, to get you to. Okay, so the steady part. 13. This is similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So like this is, so if we figure it out, you want the exact, right? Uh, or approximate. I mean, yeah, you're, so you're like, answering a question, you just have to be able to justify it. So, okay, so this is a case where approximate might make more sense. Okay, so this is minutes, or it's about 42.43. So, because that's like what you figure out for that, right? Okay, so what does that tell you? That, the, that this car travels, so like, takes 42 minutes for the race. It's 42 okay, minutes. so how are we going to answer the question? Do you need to find the other car then? Because you have to find like, which car would you want to have. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so what did you guys decide? Would you rather have a steady car? Because it's double the distance in the same amount of time. So tell us, tell me how you found out that. Because it's the one mile per minute. So if you go 30 minutes, you go 30 miles, okay. and then on this one, when you uh, square it, 30, you got 900, and if you divide it by 60, it was going to equal 15. So it's only going to go half as far? Yeah, Okay. in the same amount of time. Okay. So that's why we chose that one. All right. And I want to... Doing the other way. Yeah. Okay. So it goes 45 miles farther? 90 squared divided by 60, right? Hold if the steady car has to wait 20 minutes to start, how would that change? Okay, I want you to stop and go back and see if you can think of another way to prove this. 
Is there another way you could have worked this out and gotten those same answers? So think about some different ways to represent the problem. Clara, would you be comfortable sharing your method here with the class? That would be great. I'll have you do it. Second, and then um, Chelsea, would you mind sharing this first one with the class? With the class? Yeah, with the class. Sure. Okay, I need everybody to kind of stop for a minute. Let's kind of come together. I'm going to have Chelsea come up and show us what she decided. For the steady car, um, it goes one mile per minute. So we did one times 30 because there's 30 minutes. And so that would mean you go 30 miles. Now, why did you choose 30 to start with? Because it said in the race you go 30 miles. Okay. So if you go one mile. So you figured, what the heck, we'll yeah. just put that in. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so for the variable car, the equation we put was, sorry, you go 30 squared divided by 60. And that right there gives you 900. And then you divide that by 60 which equals 15 miles. And, and you, did, you started with 30 on this one because? Because you go 30 miles. And if you square that, it would have given you 900. You said you, you go 30 miles, but is that what you put in there, is 30 miles? Yeah. That's what I put. Austin, do you remember what you guys were doing? I don't even know what you asked. OK, Kyler, do you remember? So why did you put 30 in? 30 represents the what? The distance. The distance. No, well, which 30 represents the distance? This is a little confusing. So um, on your very first one, Chelsea, right above the first 30, 1 times 30, would you put minutes there? OK. So then the 30 that's down below, Austin, what, what is that 30? Is this 30 minutes? Miles. Or is this 30 miles? That's 30 miles. Uh, Kyler, do you agree this is 30 miles? Yeah. Okay, now I had another group who did this the same way, and I've got to make sure that you're, you're accurate in your thinking here, because what did the formula say? Read us the formula, Kyler, right off of, your, off of what it says. Um, what one? The question? The variation, the variables car. Okay. Um, with the push of a button, travels the distance in miles that equals the square of the number of minutes traveled. Okay, stop divided. right there. The square of the number of minutes. So if you're squaring 30, this 30 is what? Minutes. Minutes. So will you write minutes right above that one so we don't get confused uh, that we're using that number 30 in two different ways. And the reason you pick 30 is not because it was 30 miles. Who can tell us why she picked 30 to put in that second equation? To, the first. to compare it to the first one. We're going to see how, how long it takes each one, so we're going to make sure that they're each using the same amount of minutes. Okay. Will you say that again, Jayden? Yeah, so the 30 minutes is comparing it to the top car's 30 minutes that it takes to finish the race. Okay, so now if you put a, an SC out in front of the one and a, a VC on the other one, just so that we're really clear which one is which, uh, in, in, to the left. To the left of it, there we go, super. Okay, so now what's your conclusion, Chelsea? My conclusion was the city car goes faster because you doubled the distance in okay. less time. We're good, everyone understand? Okay, thank you, Chelsea, very much. Amy, will you come up? I'm just going to uh, capture all this if I can get my board to work. Yes. I want you to show us how you did it. I'm just going to put this up here. Same thing, do, do a good job of standing to the side and kind okay, of. Okay, so with ours, we did it like the SC is still the same because it's one minute per mile, so then it's still the same thing. But we did a variable for our next one because we don't know what the minutes are, so we just put X there and we know it's divided by 60. And then that's equal to the 30 miles, because that's what it tells us that we get. And so then you put this over one, and you do cross products, 
And then, so this equals just x squared. And then that's equal to 180. And, and then you uh, square root those to get rid of square. So then x equals about 42.43. So then we chose, so then it's the um, steady car would be better since it takes less time. So let's yeah. put some units on that. 42.343 what? Minutes. Minutes. Now, uh, and the steady car would take how long? The steady car would take 30 minutes. And so we've shown another way to indicate that we would choose the steady, steady car because it would do it in less time. Anybody have any questions for Amy? Okay, super. All right, Spencer, would you do show us what you did for the second part where the racetrack is 90 miles? Okay. So we used the same thing as Amy did, and so we used a variable, so it's x squared over... 60 equals 90. And then you times all this by 60. And you times this by 60. And that equals 5,400 equals x squared. And to get rid of that squared, you got to square root it. And you have to do it to both sides. And so x equals, was it 40? 73. No, 73. Point. Point. And that would be how many minutes it would take for the variable car. And for the <clears throat> steady car, it would be 90 minutes because you're going one mile every minute. So that's your steady car. So you want to choose your variable car. Very good. Okay. Um... Jaden, would you go up and show in our last corner the method that she used to do the 90 mile part? Uh, if you can stand this right. other way. <laughs> I know it's kind of rough. Um, Ride a little bit and then move. <laughs> okay, so the one side for the variable car, this is how far it's gonna go in 90 minutes. And I don't know what that number is. It's 135. It's on, what's on your paper? So if they both took 90 minutes to do the race, like over here, the standard car took 90, 90 minutes, then this one would go 135 miles. So it would beat it by a long ways. OK, but we only had to go how far? To go 90 miles. So how do we know? For sure that at that 90 mile spot. But this one went farther in the same amount of time. Yeah, so it's it's there beforehand no matter what. Oh, it has to be because the 90 miles is what the, the steady car did in 90 minutes. Okay, that was a good explanation, Jaden. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everyone okay with what we've done? Now, just to talk... Wait, you can have different, like, different... Like, you can have... Like, decide which one you think goes farther. Like, it doesn't have to be the same. How like, did, did we, well, what, I'm not, like I'm she confused. She thinks that the steady car goes faster, but we think that the variable car goes faster. In this situation, did you think the variable car went faster? Yeah, but in ours, the, no. Hers was the steady car, and ours was the variable. Okay, so remember, we're doing two different problems. This one, this problem up here is if the race was 30 miles. This one here was if the race was 90 miles. Oh. Okay? So in answer to your question, Erica, it depends on how long the track is, the race is. That's right. That's going to make a big difference on to uh, which, one, which car we're going to choose. Okay? Now, quick thing about, about the algebra. Okay? Amy solved this one um, by doing cross products. Okay? And um, Spencer did this one by multiplying both sides by 60. Is that the same or is that different? It's the same. Okay, so how does cross products work? We're really just doing what? 
timesing both sides by some number. In this case, we times over here by 60, times 60 to both sides, and actually times one to both sides, but timesing by one doesn't change anything, so we're good. All right, just wanna do a real quick thing on the algebra. Now, is there another way? I actually do several representations. You guys all, this is actually kind of two different ideas. Well, these two, both of, both of those groups, worked with starting with a number and figuring out how far it would go. Figuring out, starting with time and figuring out the, the miles. And this group figured out using a variable and started with the, the distance, or the, yeah, the distance. So could we create a table? And I want to create a table for, for the minutes traveled. And then I want the distance for steady car. And I want the distance for variable car. OK? Let's kind of just do this together, because I don't think it's going to be too hard. What kind of units do you think we should use? How, how often should we figure out what's going on, based on what you've been thinking? Does everybody understand the question, so I don't embarrass anybody? Okay, so let me ask the question again. I'm going to, should I put up here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minutes? Or should I go every 10, every 20, every 30, every 50, every 100? What's, what's the intervals we're gonna do? So uh, let me pick on somebody here. Elliot. Uh, I was thinking every like 10 because you would go like 30 miles. You wanna see how many it goes each Mile. That's what I was thinking, and then okay. you can, and then you can go all the way to ninety easily. Okay. Wait, and why are we interested in the ninety, Elliot? Because we're also doing ninety miles to, to compare how far it goes over a long period of time instead of a short period of time. Okay. Um, are you just, us to get us on our back? Um, you guys can just follow, follow along. Well, actually, I would like you to do it on the back. So, yes, thank you. Um, Spencer, I'm going to give you the really tough job. Will you come up and fill in all of the distances for the steady car? I know that's really a big challenge for you. Okay. Um, and then for the distance for the variable car, um, Austin, let's start with you. Will you do the 10? Uh, Chelsea, you do 20. I want you to figure out how far the variable car is going to go in 10. And then you do it in 20. We've already got 30. Kyler, you do 40. Mitch, do 90. And Elliot and Amy and Claire, I want you to pick any ones you want and check and make sure everybody does things right. You check. <laughs> OK, give you a minute to do those. So what is that telling you about about the race, about the cars. The longer the race is, the car gets faster. Okay, say that again, Jaden. The longer the race is, the variable car gets faster every time. Okay, does that make sense for everybody? So why is that happening? Why is that happening? Mitchell, you got that number 90? So, do, you, do you know what to do? Yeah. Okay, so what's the formula we're using for finding the the minutes or the, yeah, the miles, if you know the minutes. Okay, this is the minutes, this is 90 squared. Would you like to come up, up, up and do it on my calculator up here, Mitchell? Would you come do it up here so we can get that taken care of? Mitchell, come do it up here. Excuse me. Divide this by 60. Not Just back here, Aunt. Just like you do on your calculator. Right there. One more. Okay. So, write it in. What happened to my table? Okay, all right, so everyone clear now, are our miles good? So again, these are miles, this is miles, this is minutes, okay? We're all clear. Okay, now, so we can see, in fact, at what point does it not matter which car you have? At which point does it not matter? Um, Abby. At 60. 
And why is it at 60 that it, we know that? Because they're all the same. They're all the same. Okay, and it really didn't matter that the minutes were the same, but it mattered that the two distances were exactly the same. Okay, so we got those two together. All right, so why is this one doing what it's doing and this one's doing what it's doing? What do you think? Spencer? It's because of the squared. Because of the squared. What does a square do to a graph? It makes a parabola. It makes a parabola, okay? If we were going to graph these, in fact, can we write the functions? I would like you all to write on your paper the two functions for each one. So if I was to take my chart here and kind of extend it over here a little bit so that I had here one more column and I said for m minutes, what would I put in? What would be the function or the formula that would allow me to determine how, what the distance is for either one? Okay, everyone understand the question? Okay, the question is, for any type of minutes, how do I find out the distance of the steady car? How do I find out the distance for the variable car? Okay, Kyler? Are you talking about like minutes squared divided by 60? I am, and which, and which one does that go to? What do you, oh, the variable time. Okay, so minutes squared divided by 60. Okay, Kyler's done that one. Clara, what's the other one? Isn't it just the minutes? It's just the minutes, okay? Those are our two variables. And so what we can write is we can write one function is distance equals minutes. This is the steady car. Distance equals minutes squared over 60. There's our variable car. Those are two functions that we have going, okay? What do the graphs look like? What do the graphs look like? Let me copy this over so we can do this all on one page. Yeah, I want you, everyone grab a piece of grid paper out of your bucket, and why don't you do a graph of this and see what you can come up with, okay? Um, well, you we want to like make it. Yeah, because we're rounding some stuff anyway, so yeah, you don't have to have a one for one. You can make every grid be, in fact, when I did this one, I made every grid how much? Ten. So whatever you want to do. Always make your graphs be workable for you. Mitchell, come come where put where you think the fixed point and the fixed line are approximately. Just just as a good review for where we've been before. Fixed point. That's the vertex. Where's the fixed point? What do we call the fixed point, everyone? Focus. 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 Yeah, the focus. Where's the focus got to be? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Just if you had to guess, where would you put the focus? Somewhere. Put it there. How many agree? Mitchell just did a really good job there. Okay, now, where's the fixed? Help him out. Um, Abby, has to be where? It has to be directly above the vertex. Yes. Yeah. So, somewhere. And then if that's where your fixed point is, where does your directrix have to be, your fixed line? And what do we know about the position of it? Same distance. Same distance. You need a line. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, my next question is, uh, and I'm watching clock because we're getting close to bail, so I want to kind of, kind of finish up with just this, and then we're going to start with this again tomorrow. But where is, so can, you, can, you, can someone just kind of show us how close Mitch got? In other words, can we kind of look at the distances to see? Just, anyone following what I'm asking? Amy, you want to come up and draw and, and kind of show us what I'm trying to say here? What's that? Yeah, like an x-y point. 
So then you pick a point and you draw down to your square and then you draw to there. Not to there. You have to go to oh, where. You the one who gave us the definition, girl. There we go. I thought that was the point. Because uh, those are equal distance and yeah. then you have to find the distance. So how do you do? Do you think those are equal? Uh, they're all right. Not too bad. And we really should be on the parabola, right? Yeah. We should be right there. Yeah. Going that Sorry. way. Okay. Uh, All right. Everyone okay with that? Okay. So what we have here is we actually have a system of equations. We have two equations. We have a parabola and we have a line. We have that system. And you guys solve the system. When we solve a system, where do you think the solution to that system is? Your solution isn't what we talked about as the answer to that first question, which car do you want to own? The solution is where or what? Erica, what do you think? Where's the solution to this system? Um. What's not? I, I don't know. Where, where would you guess? If you were going to say, where's the solution to the system? What do you think? Anyone want to help her out? I don't yeah, get the question. Mean? Does anyone have an idea what I'm, I'm going for? Like, Abby? No? Claire? Isn't it where they meet up, like the points where they cross? The place where they meet up, the places where the solution's the same. In other words, when we solve a system, and for this particular problem, we're actually asking the question, at what point is the time for each car and the distance for each car the same? And where does that happen? 60, 60, 60. Where else does it happen? Zero, zero, when they start out.